Hello everyone, and I am sitting here with, uh, what would you call yourself, an armchair fashion historian? Yes. And um, so I, I've been playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and I've noticed a lot of uh, really eerie things when it comes to uh, just generally the overall aesthetics. And um, I have Isabel with me, and she is very good at pointing some of these things out. So. We're going to start off with the main character here in some of the promo art. Um, what do you think of this costume? Well, all in all, it's just way too much, considering this is the early Viking period, like in 850. Right. All of these characters are way, wearing way too many layers. And so, in some cases, the layers don't even seem to make any sense. On the second guy to the right, he doesn't even have sleeves, yet he has a ton of fur yeah. and a cape on. Then other guys have other fur with no sleeves on. And then our main character here has just way too much leather on him. These base layers would have been made out of a linen or a wool. If they're trying to keep themselves warm, it would have more likely been made out of a wool woolen material not this linen but with a leather over sewn tank top thing with yeah. all of these belts and everything the belts are also very impractical as you know you're trying to move around fight and dodge enemies but you can't move with that giant hunk of leather in 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 the um in the middle of the torso it, it just it restricts movement way too much. It's almost like a corset. And, and I know I talked about some of this in, in one of my videos before, but uh, this is just going to be a longer video. We're going to go through some of the uh, promo art, just some of the characters, and some of the, uh, what do you call it, the designs they have before yeah, the game. Uh, the concept or, art. Concept art, thanks. So here's uh, pictures of the main character, Avar. In photo mode and uh, it allows us to see the costume in closer detail and again something I notice is just the uh, massive wrestling belt on his it also torso kind again. of reminds me of a traditional Eastern European belt worn by men like for ceremonial and folk costume dancing purposes not for any sort of you know anything that would resemble like fighting or anything yeah and and saying that it's a folk costume like to keep in mind then you have to realize that folk costumes are like a a later i don't know 18th like, century 18th and 19th century phenomenon yeah so this type of belt would have not been around in any capacity in 850 like made this his second belt but his two second belts are much more accurate, but he would have only really been wearing one. Yeah. Again, to allow for more movement, and also, he probably wouldn't have been carrying so much stuff around his waist that he needs two belts. Right. And what do you think of his um, uh, under-torso? Does that look fine? No. The, the blue torso. Oh, the blue torso? Um, that is fine. I mean, like, it's it's a tunic. I, they would have had splits at the sides. They were, they were available in both fashions. Um, fur trim was a thing. Right. So was the urn style... Um, design at the bottom. Design at the bottom. Yeah, that's pretty accurate to what I would, I would think he would be wearing. But what I don't find accurate is that leather thing over top of everything. He might have been wearing some sort of protective layer, like maybe made out of mail or, you know, or even, um, you know, plates sewn together, but usually those plates would be metal. It's not known if they were made out of leather yet, but this leather thing he has has no uniformity to it at all. It looks like it's just random scraps of, me of leather that he messily sewed together, and men wouldn't have men would have known how to sew a tunic or, or a cover like this in a more uniform fashion. They knew that you could sew underneath things. He wouldn't have had this messy, overdone stitching. Right, that... you, you said it looks like Frankensteinian, like... Yeah, 
it, it's like trying to say, oh, look, this is rugged, a man made it, but the thing is, men would have been expert craftsmen at making things as well. It wasn't just women who knew how to sew. Yeah, I think you can see it on his pants here, too, a little bit. Yeah, well, that's, that's patching, but that's it's nowhere near as bad as that. What, what she's talking about is all this right here, though. All these rugged stitching. Okay. Um, some concept art of Ivor. Pretty much see the same thing. Um, although here, it makes his shoulder piece even more noticeable. Yeah. And that shoulder piece is completely inaccurate for the period as well. Those things are called pauldrons, and they were not a thing till the 1400s, the early Renaissance. They tried to make it in leather to appear more early, but... The fact is that the technology was not there to make such a garment till the 1400s. And most commonly, that would have been made out of metal. And I, I don't know why they'd want to do that. I mean, that's, you know, there's nothing like this in, in Norse or Viking culture. Like Yeah, that's a French thing. Yeah, something like that. French and English, not, not Viking. And then here we see, again, the stitching. Ugly stitching again. And... One thing we noticed about all these characters, though, is their legs usually look pretty good. Yeah, they're, somehow they got that. Their boots are fine. They would have worn like the fur on the underneath side of the boot, so it keeps you warmer. That's very common. You know, the the legs look okay. The pants could be a little baggier, but you know, but stylistically, it's fine because so, it's sometimes still a it video looks baggier. Game. No, then than that's others, good. Yeah. yeah. Okay, more concept art. Why? Is there a skull uh, tied with yeah. shoelaces to his shoulder? That what? makes no sense. And on the pauldron, that yeah. <laughs> is a Lord of the Rings character. That is not a eight. That is not a seventh century Viking. Ninth century. Or ninth yeah, century yeah. Viking. Yeah. Um, and again, it's part of the entire Assassin's Creed universe. But hoods. What do you know about hoods? in the ninth century there were none yeah. the earliest finding of hoods which we do have findings of viking hoods but they date to the 11th century not to the 9th century yeah so they're they're 200 years early and here we have a i, I don't know if it's a cosplayer or model showing off some uh marketable costume based on the game and uh, we actually really like this. I, I wish the game stuck to something like this instead of, uh, well, here we go. His disgusting leather Lord of the Rings get up. Yeah, you see that um, first image. You see, it. this is very much the Viking silhouette. Again, other than the pants being a bit skinny, this is common to what a... a a man in the ninth century would wear. The only inaccuracies here is this lacing on the side, um, because in the ninth century they made clothing baggy enough to last you throughout your whole life, and you could just pull it on and pull it off. You didn't have to make it close to your body in any sense. That was not a thing really till the 1400s. And then here we have some more concept art for female Ivor. And I actually tended to like this one better than the one they stuck with. I mean, of course, we still have too many belts here. Again, you can't move or fight and with that mi that much pressure around your waist. Yeah. Um, but then the, the female uh, Norse people, they usually had like this belt where they would ho hook like tools onto. Yes. We see here that they hooked weapons onto. I don't know if they ever would have done that but i you know they, they took the liberty there mm -hmm. um one thing that is inaccurate though is these striped uh pant leggings yes stripes were not popular till around the 13th century in which they would have only really been worn by criminals prostitutes actresses and clowns i do like like i like the armor and the protective layer that is over her tunic a, a bit better in this version because it is closer to the um sewn together small plate like 
armor that they would have worn back then. The name of it escapes me. But I don't like that she has another leather thing underneath of that. Oh, she does? Yes. Oh, under her, or over top of her blue yeah. tunic. Which is long sleeve. Yes. Here's another version of her. Um, it's sort of similar. She has a cape on here. Same striped leggings. Uh, although the, the tunic does look a little different. Yeah. Okay, this is something like a berserker uh, for the concept art, and he is a big dude. Uh, but I think we have pretty much the same criticisms for him, except he has this weird padding here. Uh, do you remember what that's called? A. We'll put it up on the screen. Can't remember it. Yes, but what I do know about it is that originated as a piece of crusader undergarment that they would wear underneath their armor and that would have been in the 12th century not in the 9th century this armor on his shoulder is much more accurate to what they could have worn although there have been it, it's debatable if they were made out of leather or if they just stuck to metal when making this type of armor right and it's a it's a more eastern thing that made its way into scandinavia yes and, and they traded it with from the Middle East. Dreams. Okay, yeah. And here we have a, a concept, a design that we really liked. We wish the, the main protagonist, Ivor, uh, would have looked like this. Because the cape is completely accurate to how they would have worn it. They could have worn it under their shoulder like this or over their shoulder as well. You could have pulled the cape over your head instead of having the completely inaccurate hood. The tunic looks nice, although I would have made the sleeves a little longer to be yeah. completely accurate. But even the pants, the pants are what they're supposed to look like. That is the pant thickness that average Viking men would have worn. And what I see being worn by people who research and do their study and go to reenact as Vikings. Yeah, and it, it, in the game it makes me really frustrated that I, I don't really have the option to play something like this uh the closest thing i get is the uh the thralls uh tunic i like to throw on every once in a while because it looks uh the most accurate in the game but uh it it's one of those it's one of those pieces that you start out with and you're not able to upgrade so it's completely impractical to play with and i don't think ubisoft understands that you could have a character like this and you could still have plenty of customization Yes. You don't need to introduce... Um, Layers of fur and leather. Yeah, yeah. And just make it, you know, because there are always going to be people that enjoy that more and more fantastical people and they think that's boring, but I think there should be the option for more purist people like us who would maybe want to play something more accurate to what they actually would have worn in the time period for people who are interested in Assassin's Creed for the history over the action. Absolutely. Okay, moving on, we have another Viking here with the similar padded armor from the time of the Crusades, as well as this, this uh, Eastern leather plating. Is it leather here? No, yeah. that... I mean, it, I, I think they could be... It could be rusty metal, because, see, it's kind of gray mm. down here. So maybe that, that that's accurate. But again, I like what they do with the pants here. If only all of their pants looked like that, but without the stripes. Right, right. Okay, we have another, uh, looks like a Viking hunter here. What do you think? I think it looks pretty good, despite the... Uh... He kind of almost looks sa like Sami. Yeah. Which I think is very interesting. That's like the color scheme pulls together like a Sami traditional outfit. Which I think is very nice. Um, I like the hat. Again, I can't tell what's going on at his midsection. I wish that, I knew That's what more. I was going to say. I like everything except this here. It's just a mess. And this is even with a lot of the characters that made it into the game. You can't tell when one layer ends and another starts. Uh, it just looks sloppy. Okay, another Viking. Uh, pretty much the same criticism here, right? Yes, again, but like 
what we were saying is like how could he reach all of his weapons with all of those layers on him wouldn't it like get tight and wouldn't you overheat while fighting right imagine him using this his um the arm we see on his right here and picking up the sword in the middle imagine him lifting the whole way up with all this uh you know he has fur, fur a blanket a blanket or cape uh a few layers here armor uh, yeah it it seems pretty impractical to you know pull that giant sword which is also very inaccurate to what yeah. most vikings would have had maybe unless he's like if he's like i think he was a jarl so like oh yeah maybe that that would make sense he's a nice helmet too so that yeah. would explain it okay another viking concept art and again you see the stripes and also a thing i I, I pointed out is that it is very unclear if men would have worn this type of brooch. That is more similar to the female um, shield brooches that they would have worn to connect their apron dresses together. It, it also kind of looks like a 1930s sweater clip, but those were also just worn by women. There's no evidence of men wearing these type of brooches. Okay, so this is uh, Sigurd, who is the main character's brother. This is the concept art here. Uh, I'm not sure this exact design made it into the game, but it's pretty similar. Uh, he has bare arms here, which is a little weird. I think I think the center one is the most. Yeah, the center or last one. Here, I think I, I have a picture of him here. What do you think of this, it's, this midsection? You take the inaccuracy of the... Um, the crusader quilted undergarment and then you make it in leather which makes it doubly inaccurate because they would not have had the quilting techniques let alone quilting leather techniques in the ninth century it just makes absolutely no sense and also he just kind of looks like a car seat <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I was trying to think of like what i could compare it to i think it looks like one of those outfits where you um like superman outfits for kids mm -hmm. where you have like a puffed out chest yeah it, it just doesn't look, look good like and also he it also it has a hoodie on it as well which right would make no sense even with the crusader undergarment yeah okay here we have ivor the boneless uh <laughs> metal eyelets at the bottom right right he looks like a shoe metal eyelets are victorian they would they had maybe sewing eyelets but that's still like a 1300 sort of thing that women would use to get themselves in and out of their dresses they would not have had giant metal eyelets those are like shoelaces those make no sense and the thing i hate the most about his costume here is is this all the webbing on his uh, and also torso that lacing is, that that is not early that is not early medieval they had spiral lacing in the middle ages but that's the high middle ages that's not this period right it looks like a corset mm -hmm. here he is in the game we see something very similar yep more pauldrons more all of that I mean, at least this looks like wool here yeah which is um and also, all the characters, even if they're not assassins, have gauntlets, which doesn't really make a lot of sense either. Yeah, we talked about regardless of if they're assassins or not, they still sort of follow the, the silhouette. Yeah. Uh, you know, all characters sort of have the... Uh... Fur at the shoulders yeah. to make them look extra broad. They have a hood. So this is a, uh, a one of the seer enemy characters. Uh, there's no real evidence of anything like this. We understand... You know, they, they take uh, their liberties and they, they try to be creative. But this but... is completely ahistorical. Other than her shoes, this looks like an Alexander McQueen runway piece from 1997. He was a surrealist fashion designer that played with dark elements of nature. And that's what this looks like. It doesn't look like something that someone just pieced together in 850. Yeah, you're right. And... He... We understand having like antlers or something, but I, I don't know. They're understand. not even. The, the antlers make no sense because they're not placed where normal antlers would be. The one in the center is the most, I think, all right one yeah. because it, that's where the antlers would be. 
Okay, another main character. Here she is in the game, though. Uh, one thing I noticed right away is her, her necklaces, and I, I really like it. I, yeah, those are completely accurate to what women would have worn. And her, her brooch is here. Yeah, especially since she's Sigurd's wife and he's very wealthy. Like, she would have had a lot of necklaces, a lot of beads. Good point. Because they did wear their wealth on their necklaces. Again, here's another Polish Highlander belt there. Yep. Also gauntlets. At least we have spiral lacing here instead of corset lacing. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. But still, that's a late Middle Ages thing. I wouldn't say that's accurate for 950, but it's not Victorian corset lacing. Much to say about her that we didn't say already? There's uh, a lot of fur is coming out. a lot of out. fur there that, that doesn't make a lot of sense. May, like, and again, she has her breasts uncovered, and if you have that much fur on, you might want to try to cover your breasts with it so you are warm. Yeah. I have nothing wrong with the cleavage, but if she's trying to be warm, you shouldn't have your cleavage out. Uh, and this this is an accurate... Um... Tablet woven belt. Okay. But, again, yeah. she would have only really had a f one belt, not two or three or however what, many. What's with these random straps just coming out of her underside, you know? That makes no sense. Those look like 90s club kid fashion, like yeah. cyber goth droopy pants parachute pants her headdress looks more slavic than viking the jewelry at the top although not symmetrical it resembles temple rings in a lot of way which would have been worn in northeast or, or northwest by northwest polish viking women but not by norwegian danish viking women right and, and she's supposed to be a norwegian and um we this middle picture right here she looks Native American. You know, she looks Aztec almost. And she has, like, zebra and cheetah fur on oh, her. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Yeah. yeah. I think we even have some more. Yeah. This here, she she just looks like she came out of an Aztec fantasy game. And I, I'm... We should point out, these, these didn't make it into the game, but still. These would be good if it was a fantasy warring tribe game, but it's not. Here, she still has tiger and i don't even know zebra, zebra. Print. okay and then we have king alfred uh he we sort of have to look at it with a different mindset now because you know he's he's um the king of wessex so he's going to be much wealthier and involved in christendom so uh, are we sure on this uh what would we call this here uh, it's a vestment sort of garment, which I can tell is probably Byzantine inspired. But what doesn't make sense about that is the fact that it's only thigh length. These Byzantine tunics would have been at least to his ankles. They would have been... Back then, the talent of dressmaking was not the most important um aspect of of your showing off your wealth like so you could have a complicated garment that meant nothing the what meant something was the amount of fabric you could put on your body so the fact that that is short is not something a king would wear the one on the far right is much more accurate although i would still say a little short like because he's a king he can afford to have long giant tunics okay really yes um he also has the assassin silhouette though even though he's a villain right which doesn't make any sense to me and, and the middle one here looks like he should be you know fighting out with Ezio because he looks like he's from he's, the renaissance yeah that's a 1400s doublet there in the middle one yeah. it has the quilting on this side and it's me party which is also very 1400s me party means the bisection of color in the garment. One half is one color, the other half is the other. Right. And we should also keep in mind this is, you know, in the 800s, there should be minimal French influence. And all I see when I look at this is... France. France or even, Italy. Even that one on the far right yeah. is France. So the one on the left here is the one that made it into the game. And I think he looks better without the uh, 
Although I don't understand the hipster scarves. Yeah, he Those had... are like woolen, like modern hipster scarves. Right. Here he is again. In the Byzantine robe, which, again, you can't really tell it's inaccurate here. This looks completely accurate until he stands up. Okay, and then we have, uh, his, I can't remember his name, but this is one of the uh, proto-assassins that make their way into the uh, village of the main protagonist. And, you know, this does not look like it's from the 800s at all. This is clearly, you know, it's supposed to be, uh, it's supposed to resemble something from the first Assassin's Creed games, which takes place during the First Crusade. Uh, but this should have no place in the game really yeah the plate armor on his shoulder the straps around him the crusading looking tunic it all just makes no sense okay and then we have harold fairhair uh which is interesting because he actually has less layers than like uh ivor and his outfit would be completely fine, I think, if you didn't have that wrestling belt. Now, that doesn't even look like a traditional costume belt. That just looks like a wrestling belt. Right. And something I noticed, too, is why is his uh, tunic so dull? If he was the king, he'd surely wear Bright something purples, colorful, right? Purples, uh, greens, blues, like the harder colors to get. That's what you'd wear. Right. Okay, this is Rollo, the founder of Normandy, uh, Viking Normandy. But if you watch Vikings, you might confuse him for Ivar the Boneless because he looks exactly like the Vikings design for Ivar the Boneless. Especially the hair. Especially the hair. And this is just this, monstrosity. This, it's just pure Vi like Vikings TV show. And the Vikings TV show is completely inaccurate for Viking clothing. As I'm sure many people know. Um, and I think that the designers of this game probably looked more at the designs from that show, because it's popular, than from extant examples from the actual Viking period, or even at reenactors from the Viking period, which is disappointing. Right, they're just trying to wave, ride the wave of the Vikings TV show. But there's still a whole world out there of, uh, you know, accurate... Uh, Viking attire and, and Viking aesthetics. You know, there's a lot of lit literature on this stuff, yeah. and it's a shame they don't. And the the thing is, is a lot of it. people don't want to look at non-American sources, and most of the accurate sources are from Scandinavia or even like Central Europe. Okay. Yeah, most of the accurate sources come from those websites, not from American sources. Oh, right, sources. right. So yeah. Especially when it comes to um, reenactment. Or, yes. Uh, uh, you know, costuming as a recreational activity. Yeah. Okay, this is actually Thor. Uh, <laughs> I would not be able to guess that, actually. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's anything, any hints we have that it's Thor. Do you see anything? No. Like, it, it, he's supposed to have magical gloves. Why does a he belt. need that many weapons if he's the strongest man? Like, strongest god. Yeah. And he should have red hair. And why hair. does he need that much armor if he's basically undefeatable? Yeah. Well, again, you know, if um, you pay attention to the mythology, he should have something like gloves and a belt. You know, some of his primary uh, uh, attributes with him. He doesn't even There's have nothing, a hammer. Though. Where's his hammer? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, then we have Tyr here. The god of war. This is the god of war. He looks like a CEO of a donut company. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. He, he looks very modern, actually. and It's probably the shaved face. Yeah. But... Yeah, there, there's just nothing to show us, maybe other than his long These sword. These are god, go gods. Yeah. Yeah. Would you have guessed these are gods? Or just, uh, you know, Dungeons and they Dragons characters. They still look like extras from the Vikings TV show. Yeah. Then we have Odin here, which, you know, I think it's obvious. But uh, it's it's not too exciting at all. Not very creative either. Yeah. 
Then we have Freya. Who still has the assassin silhouette. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Nothing to really tell us that either. She looks like she could be a background and, character. And she's a god. Why is her tunic all tattered and yeah horribly sewn as well? She could magically mend it at any second. She doesn't have to horribly sew it. That's right. Oh, and then my favorite, Loki. <laughs> like his assassin's gauntlets. Um, of course, I love his six belts, as all characters have to have in this game. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry if it's sounding repetitive, but... um, A lot of the characters have the same things wrong with them. Right. Okay, and then, just real quick, I wanted to mention... General aesthetics for a second. Yeah, Um. so I hope this isn't a big spoiler, but at one point you, you do end up in Asgard, and it's not really essential to the story at all, so if this is new to you, uh, it's no big deal. Uh, if you look here, we have two... Uh, actually, we have a bunch of statues working down the way of the Bifrost, and we have, uh, you know, what does this look like to you? Does that look like a, a Norse warrior? No, it looks like a Greek it, or Roman guy. Yeah, and so... I wish I could find better pictures of these, but uh, there's there's also a statue of a woman over here. And Wearing a Greek peplos. Yeah, the, these are uh, copied from the the ruins of England, the Roman ruins of England that you walk through, and just sort of pasted in the middle of Asgard, as if, you know, these Greco-Roman statues belong here. Which they don't because it's the opposite poles of Europe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here we have... Okay, so we have some more ruins. Roman ruins here. Greek. Yeah. Greek columns. And I, I don't think there was anything like that. And then we have a very uh, German Art Nouveau style Heimdall's Tower, which... I don't know if the the gods would have predicted Art Nouveau, but apparently they did. Looks like they did. And, Here we have it. And our first thought when I was watching him and he was playing the game was, Welcome to Disney World. It looks like the Cinderella's, Cinderella's castle. castle. So that was our thoughts. On, on... the general... On the general aesthetics of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Yeah, it, w it wasn't a, a perfectly put together video or anything, but uh, man, it's frustrating playing that game. Yeah. Uh, it's frustrating watching it too, especially when my thing is fashion and art history. Yeah, and, and so they, you know, the, the Assassin's Creed franchise uses just enough history to pull people in. But, uh, you know, not enough to keep me engaged. And so I, I bought the game because I'm so interested in history and in Vikings and early Middle Ages. And I find myself just getting bored. There's not enough uh, historical allure to keep me in. And I wonder if a lot of other players feel a similar thing. 